What's up, guys? I'm back in my office. Uh, and I figured I should talk about what's been happening lately. Your boy's been getting called out. Your boy's been getting called out. Your boy has been um, under attack recently by some young fighters. And honestly, it's going on in a lot of sports right now. Whereas uh, these older f basketball players, uh, fighters, Football players are stating opinions, and the uh, the younger athletes are viewing it as jealousy or 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 uh, maybe uh, some some uh, disdain for them and the things they're accomplishing. But I don't fit into that category. You know, I sit into a I sit next to the octagon and I do a job. Now, recently I've come under fire for a couple things. One first thing was Dominic Cruz back in December. Talking about my commentary, but you have to understand about Dominic and I is we have a very unique relationship. Dominic and I have worked together now since the Fox days. And we were both champions working at Fox, and we always worked together. And there have been some times where I've seen Dominic have fantastic shows. I've seen him have bad shows. He's seen me have fantastic shows, and he's seen me have bad shows. But the reality is this. Dom and I have worked past that. I thought last weekend in Austin, we had one of our best shows together that we've had in a really long time. And even in the video we did back in December, we were arguing, but we were arguing like two brothers. So I don't take anything Dominic Cruz says personally. I just always want to address him. Which then leads me to Saturday night uh, in the Phil Hall situation. I've seen a couple of videos of people kind of talking about the situation. And um, even my friend Chael, who's who's uh, very good at what he does. He's very good at telling a story. Um, but in this case, it was a story, right? Like, I actually listened to the video before I made this because I wanted to make sure that I didn't say something unfairly to uh, Sonnen. So what happened was, um, and even all the the the, the way people are, are, are captioning what was said in the octagon, it was a little bit different than what the what they are captioning. Phil never said pony. <laughs> Phil said you you picked the wrong opponent. Phil kept telling me I picked the wrong opponent for Deron Wynn, who is like my little brother. And I'll tell you, he got his ass absolutely destroyed out there. But the reality is, that is a tough fight for Deron on last Saturday. That's a tough fight going forward because he's got to round out those skills if he wants to compete with guys like that. Because those are the guys that have that striking, but also have that ability to wrestle and defend takedowns. So, fight ends. I get up to go do the interview. That's that's one thing that you guys don't you miss. As soon as the fight's over, I, I press the cough button, drop my headset, and I walk towards the ring. And I could hear Phil yelling at Dominic and, and Brendan saying, where's DC, where's DC, while I was walking into the ring. Or to the octagon. I step into the octagon. And Phil is doing something that we call in Louisa booting up. This dude booting up on me. Like, he's like, he's, Phil's like this, like, what's up, man? What's up? And I was like, well, what is going on? Right? He booting up on me. So I'm like, me? To Phil. And Phil's kind of telling me that I picked the wrong opponent. Well, if you want to know what that stems from, here it is. I'll tell you exactly what it stems from. When I was in Abu Dhabi, before Phil was managed by this guy named Daniel Rubenstein, who's one of my good friends, Ruby Sports and Entertainment, he asked me to sit with Phil at Fight Island. Phil and I sat with his advisor, a guy that he's very close to, and we talked and we spoke, and then we talked about Phil coming out to AKA to train with me, right? What happened next, though, because Phil knocked out Jacob Malkoon that, on that weekend. Looked tremendous. What happened next, though, was the UFC called and asked for Deron Wynn to fight Phil Hawes. That's where the, the problem is. Because Phil thought that he asked me to train, and I viewed him as a weak opponent, so then I took him as Deron's opponent. But see, that's not the truth. We didn't want to fight Phil. First off, 
I don't want to fight Phil for a number of reasons. One being, him and Duran has some history. So Duran would have appreciated or would have preferred a different opponent. We just weren't given that option. We really weren't. That's why you've seen these guys scheduled on so many different occasions. Because one, both of them tend to be Russell heavy fighters when they're fighting strikers. So they figured by putting them together, it almost guarantees that two wrestlers will cancel out each other and those guys will go out there and lay it all out on the line. I said no to the fight. I didn't think it was a great fight. And obviously look at what played out. So it's not like I was wrong in my thought in regards to the matchup. So Phil is saying I picked the wrong opponent. So I say to Phil, do you think I pick fights? Like, you think I make the fights? I go, Phil, that's ridiculous. I said, I don't make the fights, my friend. Be respectful. Be respectful. Phil being a great guy that he is, he immediately gets it, right? He, Phil's not a bad guy. That's, that's what people don't understand. I hold no ill will towards Phil Hawes for last weekend. He's high on adrenaline. He just had one of the, he had the best performance of his entire career. So he feels like King Kong. He feels like King Kong, right? He feels great out there. He's, he's hyped up. He's got this idea, probably something that has motivated him throughout the entire camp to go and put me in my place because I picked him as Deron's opponent. But the reality is I didn't do that. I try. I mean, I didn't necessarily want the fight. But it is what it is, man. If you're in this game, you have to fight the fights that are put out in front of you. So then I tell Phil, I go, hey, Phil. And I think this is where people misunderstand. And I think a lot of guys deal with this. Myself, Habib Nurmagomedov. The moment somebody beats one of those guys, they're going to feel like they beat Habib. When people beat my son in a wrestling match, they feel like they got something over on me. But they're not. They didn't beat me. And that's what I told Phil. I'm going to have some merch dropping on that, too. He didn't beat me. Um... That's what I told Phil, Uncle Phil, you didn't beat me. Like, and, and now at this point, I'm, I'm a little bit pissed off. I'm a little pissed off because I'm like, wow, what is going on here? And I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> and I'm a fighter and you cannot turn that off. But Phil, to his defense, immediately recognizes that he may be in the wrong. His entire team's off to the side going, DC, it's all good, it's all good. Behind him, right? It's just worked up. Everybody came shake my hand. And we go back and we do the interview. Two professionals doing exactly what we were supposed to do. There was a time in my life, guys, that I could not have done that. I would have left or I might have actually hit Phil Hawes because I was childish. I was immature. Jimbo Fisher told me once, children do what they want. Men do what they're supposed to. And in that moment, as a man, I was there to interview Phil Hawes. And Phil Hawes was there to be interviewed. And we did exactly that. And I hope that I did Phil Hall's justice in this post-fight interview that something I can help to propel him forward in his career. Because that is what we're there to do. We're there to help these guys in that moment propel them forward to the next thing in their career. I hope I did that for Phil Hall's. I have nothing but respect for him. And if he fights in the manner that he fought on Saturday, this kid has all the potential in the world to be a world champion. That is how good I believe Phil Hawes is. I think he can be world champ if he fights like he did last weekend. He's that good. He seems to be improving. Ten minutes past, I get a text from Daniel Rubenstein, who no longer manages Phil. Phil wants your number. Phil texts me an apology. All squash. Even at some point, hey, maybe we can still train together. That's it. It was that simple. But that is what happened on Saturday misunderstanding two professionals did their job now i hope i did phil hall's a service and he can go forward with his career and do all the great things that i know that he is going to potentially do because the reality is him being john's training partner all that other stuff that's irrelevant that doesn't matter because it it really doesn't matter it was legit a misunderstanding and we got through it and we we're two professionals that did our job sean o'malley Sean and I have this, 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 uh, this weird little dynamic, and I don't know where it stems from, because the first time I met Sean, 
he was a this was in the beginning of his career. I remember he won on the contender series and there was a lot of hype around Sean right away. And I remember sitting with him and talking to him about being in Montana to do a wrestling clinic and how he grew up and all these things about his childhood. And it seemed fine. But I think it all stems from him not understanding the commentary. And for him also being able to recognize that that's a job that he can't do. So last week we have uh, Sean on DC and RC, and we're chatting. And we have a great conversation, right? Because we tried to build the show to, to highlight the athlete. So with Sean, we do step and fly because we know this dude's a fantastic dresser. He has a lot of swag. He shows us his car collection and all these other things. Tells us about his new contract. All things that I'm so happy for him uh, in that regard. He says that I want to see him lose right afterwards. And I think it was tongue in cheek. See, that was one of the things that I didn't see on my show yesterday. Was that when, he, when they showed me the clip, I didn't see him kind of laugh it off saying he was 6'6 and all that other stuff. I didn't see that. But my point was, I don't feel like... I don't really have a dog in the race, a horse in the race. I don't have a cat. I don't have a dog in the fight. I really don't. I, I don't. I don't. When these guys win and they lose, it doesn't really do anything for me because my spot at the table is guaranteed. So for all the stuff that I get in regards to my commentary, my spot at the table is guaranteed. The only time I miss pay per views is if I have something that's conflicting. Other than that, I'm on them. The UFC is good to me. They like the work I do. But him recognizing that that's a job that he can't do shows his growth and his maturity. So I think a lot of the things that he says is tongue in cheek, but it seems as though him saying that is about me at times. And I don't know why. Because the reality is, even today, I don't fight anymore, but I'm still a very important player in this game. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I am. But I said yesterday, and I will repeat this, we cannot mistake popularity for legacy and accomplishments. Sean is a very popular guy. Sean has an opportunity to be very special in the weight class. Nothing speaks more to that than Aljamain Sterling saying he's really good because guess what? Aljamain Sterling is a champion. And when Aljamain Sterling speaks, I pay attention. When Sean O'Malley speaks, I pay attention too. Because there are no, that dude's a better striker than I've ever been in my entire career. Point blank. I could not strike like Sean O'Malley. I could not strike like Conor McGregor. I could not strike like a lot of people. But in terms of a pure mixed martial artist is where I made my money. That's where I shined. But the reality is, I don't wish for anyone's demise. The approach that he's taking to get more money, love that. I love that. You know what he said last weekend that was very telling? He said, I want to get to a point where I'm making a million dollars a fight. That's a great number. That's a great number. If you can make a million dollars a fight, but I will tell you right now, expand that thought because guess what? You don't have to make a million dollars a fight anymore. A million dollars was a baseline in 2015. We're in 2022. There's millions and millions for these fighters to make right now. And it seems as though they're trying to do that. But the only way to get to that money is to be like Izzy, to be like Habib, to be like Connor, to be like the champions of the world because those are the ones that ultimately share in the mass majority of the revenue. It's just the truth. So for the record, I will shut this down for the last time. I do not wish for Sean O'Malley to lose. I'm always entertained by Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley sitting with me on the video we did for YouTube in December was a very, very uh, good video. I thought he did a great job. I thought he's very personable. I think he's a very good fighter. I think that there are so many good things about him. And I think that next weekend in the Munoz fight, he's going to get challenged in ways that he hasn't. But I think that if he gets through that, it really does elevate him to a place that he seems to want to go in his career. Those are my thoughts on him. And my thoughts on Sean O'Malley are the same as my thoughts on 
Sean Brady on uh, Tom Aspinall. All those guys that are prospects on their way up to being champions, those are my thoughts. I wish them the best. I cannot wait to see what their journey looks like. And when they come to become champions, because some of them will become champions, and O'Malley has that opportunity, I will just still be right there to celebrate them. But I'm not one of the old guard that's hating on the young guys. Not the case. I just want to see good fights. I'm a fan just like each and every one of you. And that's what I'm here for. Right? I love the fights. So guys, like, subscribe. Next week I will have so much content. I'm sitting down with Volkanovski. I'm sitting down with Max Holloway. I'm going to talk to Jared Cannonier. Right? I'm also going to give you all some behind the scenes of my Hall of Fame induction. Because guess what? What's better than that? I'm going into the Hall of Fame, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going into the Hall of Fame. Your boy DC is getting inducted next week at International Fight Week. And I cannot wait for it. Guys, like, subscribe. Make sure you set the reminders and notifications for every time we drop a new video. Thank you guys for all the support. I love each and every one of you. When I say each and every one of you, that means Sean O'Malley too. And Phil Hawes and everybody else. Until next time, peace.